This is the outline for today's class. First, we are going to study the heat capacity at constant pressure. Second, we are going to study heat capacity at constant volume. Third, we are going to see the relation between the different heat capacities, mainly for the case of the ideal gas. And finally, we are going to work together in an example problem about the heat needed to increase the temperature at constant pressure. Let's start our class uh, understanding why it is important to study heat capacity. Because by studying heat capacity, we will be able to answer some questions, such as How much will the system temperature increase when heat is provided? Is this temperature increase proportional to the mass of the system? Is this temperature increase related to the nature of the substance? Does it make any difference when the heat is provided at constant pressure or volume? The first case that we're going to study in today's class is how heat is exchanged at constant pressure. Heat can be exchanged at constant pressure by putting a hot body on top of a cylinder filled with ideal gas. Like you're seeing here in the picture, where you have a hot body on the top of the piston, and the mass of the hot body is constant, and the heat can be exchanged to the ideal gas system enclosed inside the system. The temperature of the ideal gas increases, but pressure does not change as long as the mass of the hot body does not change. So, how much heat is necessary to raise the temperature by a certain delta T? At this point, we will define for the first time in our class today what heat capacity is. Heat capacity at constant pressure is the amount of heat needed to change the temperature of a mole of substance by 1 degree at constant pressure. Mathematically, we can define the heat capacity as so the molar heat capacity at constant pressure is the variation or the differential of the heat exchanged at constant pressure over the variation or the differential of the temperature. In terms of units, heat capacity in the international system is represented by joules over mole times Kelvin, or it's more common to represent that in calories over moles times Kelvin. It's important to say that the heat capacity at constant pressure is dependent on the temperature and pressure of the system when the experiment is performed. In other words, there is a certain temperature and pressure range where that heat capacity value is considered valid. Some examples of heat capacity at constant pressure for common substances. For instance, water it has a heat capacity equals to 17.99 calories per mole Kelvin. Methane, which is a gas, it has a heat capacity at constant pressure equals to 8.54 calories per mole Kelvin. Acetone, which is a liquid at room temperature, has a heat capacity at constant pressure equals to 20.40 calories per mole Kelvin. Ammonia, which is a gas at room temperature, has a heat capacity at constant pressure equals to 8.49 calories per mole Kelvin. Oxygen, which is a gas at room temperature, has a heat capacity at constant pressure equals to 7.02 calories per mole Kelvin. And carbon dioxide, which is a gas at room temperature, has a heat capacity at constant pressure equals to 8.67 calories per mole Kelvin. All those heat capacity values were determined at 298 Kelvin and 1 atm as pressure. It's important to point out here that higher heat capacity values, they mean that it's harder to change the temperature of that certain substance 
by 1 Kelvin unit of the temperature. Heat capacity at constant pressure varies with the temperature according to a polynomial function. For instance, heat capacity can be equal to a coefficient A which is independent, independent of the temperature plus a coefficient B times temperature plus a coefficient C times square temperature plus a coefficient D times temperature to the third plus a coefficient E divided by the temperature. The equation, as I told before, it's valid for a certain temperature range and the coefficients A, B, C and D they do not depend on the temperature. So the coefficients are not, a fun are not functions that depend on the temperature. They can be simply numbers and that certain number multiplies the temperature which is, has a certain exponent. For instance, for carbon dioxide, the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to 25 plus 55.19 times temperature minus 33.69 times square temperature plus 7.95 times temperature to the third minus 0 0.14 divided by the temperature. This expression for the heat capacity in function of temperature was determined at 298 Kelvin and 1 atm as pressure uh, the units that be obtained when you plug the temperature there will be in joules per mole times Kelvin and the range where this expression is valid is from 298 Kelvin until 1200 Kelvin. Now let's move on to the study of the heat capacity at constant volume. Heat can be exchanged at constant volume by heating up ideal gas enclosed in a container with fixed volume. Like you see here in this picture, we have that ideal gas system enclosed in a vessel with a piston at the top that you know, but in this case the piston is not movable anymore. The piston is fixed, okay? So we heated up the ideal gas, the molecules, they're going to move around, but the volume occupied by them will not change. The volume occupied by those molecules always will be the same, as long as the piston cannot move anymore. We can define the heat capacity at constant volume as the differential or the variation of the heat exchanged at constant volume over the differential or variation of the temperature. Pretty much as the heat capacity at constant pressure now, the heat capacity at constant volume is determined in joules per mole Kelvin international system or calories per mole Kelvin. Again, the heat capacity at constant volume is dependent on the temperature and pressure of the system when the experiment is performed. It's possible to relate the molar heat capacity at constant pressure and the molar heat capacity at constant volume. For solids and liquids, the heat capacity at constant pressure and the heat capacity at constant volume, they can be considered approximately the same, okay? There's not a significant difference between the values uh, determined at constant pressure and the values determined at constant volume for in the case of solids and liquids. On the other hand, for gases, uh, the heat capacity at constant pressure is larger than the heat capacity at constant volume. In other words, it means that if the same amount of energy is provided to the same amount of gas, the temperature will increase more if the volume is held constant instead of the pressure being held constant. In case of the ideal gases, there is a simple expression that relates the heat capacity at constant pressure and heat capacity at constant volume. It is the heat capacity at constant pressure minus the heat capacity at constant volume is equal the gas constant R. In the case for monatomic ideal gas, for instance, noble gases, 
in conditions of pressure and temperature that are that the, they can be considered ideal we have that the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to 5 over 2 times r where the other hand if you plug in the equation above we're going to find that the heat capacity at constant volume for a monatomic ideal gas is equal 3 over 2 times r you're not going to derive those three expressions shown on this time but you can find the derivation for all those three expressions in uh, any chapter or book about statistical thermodynamics. We have studied so far all the theory that you have to study this class related with the heat capacity at constant pressure and volume. Now let's work together in a practice problem. In this problem, we are going to study the heat needed to increase the temperature at constant pressure. Uh, this is the problem statement. Calculate the amount of heat necessary to increase the temperature of 1 mole of carbon dioxide from 300 Kelvin to 900 Kelvin while keeping the pressure constant to 1 atm. As we have obtained delta Qp before, now we need to calculate the Qp and we can do that by integrating the last formula that we show with the formula for delta Qp, okay? So delta Qp is equal to heat capacity at constant pressure times delta T. So if you integrate both sides of this equation, we are going to obtain the expression for Qp, heat exchanged at constant pressure, okay? So we integrate both sides of the equation, uh, where the limits will be the initial and the final temperature. And then what you get is the integral from initial temperature until the final temperature of the heat capacity at constant pressure times the differential of the temperature. So these equations are going to give us the heat exchanged at constant pressure in this temperature range from 300 Kelvin with the initial temperature until 900 Kelvin with the final temperature. At this point, you have figured out that the heat exchanged at constant pressure is the integral of the heat capacity at constant pressure times the temperature, where the limits will be the initial and the final temperature. Now, the second step is to insert on the integral, the expression of the heat capacity at constant pressure depending on the temperature. For the carbon dioxide, we have seen this equation before in our class today. Okay, so we plug that equation with equal to 25 plus 55 times 19 times temperature minus 33.69 times square temperature plus 7.95 times temperature to the third minus 0 0.14 over the temperature. So we plug this expression inside that integral and then we integrate that. And that's how the heat capacity expression look like when inserted inside the integral. So we have this equation, the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to integral of the temperature for initial temperature, the final temperature, and then the expression to be integrated, that's 25 plus 55 times uh, 0.19 times temperature minus 33.69 times square temperature plus 7.95 times temperature to the third minus 0 0.14 over the temperature, and then we are going to integrate this exp expression in function of the temperature. The third step is to solve the integral. As the expression to be integrated is a polynomial, you just need to increase by one unit the exponent of the variable t every time the t appears on the expression. So after integration, we get that the heat is equal to 25 times t plus 55.19 times squared t minus 33.69 t to the third plus 7.95 times t to the fourth minus 0 0.14. Okay?
Finally, the fourth step is to simply plug uh, the final temperature as equal 900 Kelvin and the initial temperature equals to 300 Kelvin in the integrated equation that you obtained before. So that's how it works. So we plug whenever uh, final temperature appears, we plug 900. Whenever initial temperature appears, we plug 300. And what you get uh, is uh, heat equals 4.2 times 10 to the 12 joules per mole. Okay, so double check this calculation, plug the values by yourself, make sure that it's all right, double check it, and you see that that's the value obtained. Okay, so we have follow all the steps necessary to determine the heat exchanged in a certain transformation that happens at constant pressure based in the heat capacity value. Okay, and the heat capacity definition, perform the integration and obtain the heat exchanged in that transformation at constant pressure. Okay. So that's all we have for our class today. I hope you have enjoyed our class and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching our class today. See you. Bye. <music>